All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Well, we have a unique honor here today. We have uh, a gentleman that really does, should not uh, need any kind of uh, introduction, Shannon Nicana Rich. Uh, you know, the, well, how's the title read here? The, the most wins, or I should say the most matches of, of any living MMA fighter, period, right? Yeah, more more fights than any living fighter in the world. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, no, I just want to make sure that that I, I say it just correctly like that. But again, you've Shannon, you've you've actually crossed over into so many different types of uh fields here right now. It's, it's you do a lot of different cool things, but uh let's 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 start from the beginning though. When you start off uh from down in the the southern Arizona Arizona school system, and I do believe <laughs> wrestling was your forte. Yeah, down in Coolidge, Arizona. Go Bears! Yeah, man. Cool, uh, Cooley C. That's because I, I, I was hoping you're going to throw a show, shout out there. Wrestling, oh, yeah, Coolidge, wrestling Arizona. And, and wrestling and skipping. You know, <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> get more school than you did go. Huh? Yeah, no, no. Coolidge was fun, man. It was a little small town. Um, you know, it was kind of like leaving to Beaverland. You know, a uh, little small town. Everybody knew everybody, and uh, it was tough, man. It was a it was a rough town. So you either grew up and uh, you worked at the prison. Or you uh, grew up and you became an inmate, and uh, I chose working at the prison. <laughs> <laughs> so the local prison had either visitors or residents. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, working at the prison, uh, it was like a, uh, it was like a homecoming or a reunion because you know you would see your your brother, your sister, your uncle, your friend, you know, and it'd be like, hey, what's up, Uncle Joe? You know, and yeah, it was it was nuts. It was nuts. That, that's always going to be comical because you think that because uh, what what the what the uh, I don't know, was it, was the correctional facility was that also one of the biggest employers I'm taking with a smaller community like that was it yeah I mean bigger... it, it, it it was the place to work I mean you either worked in the cotton fields or you worked at the prison everybody I mean literally everyone worked at the state prison uh, Florence Arizona state prison maximum security uh, it was called Central Unit and uh, they had a big wall around it so they call it the walls. And, uh, you know, like a 40 foot tall wall with towers all the way. I mean, it was, matter of fact, it's the same place that uh, Stir Crazy uh, was uh, was filmed. Really? Yeah, with uh, with uh, Gene Wilder. Yeah, it was a, that was a pretty interesting place. Oh, no, that's funny. I mean, well, it, well you, you brought up an initial comment because you said we're all the cotton fields and stuff like that because it shocked me because uh, I, I, I was living out in Mesa, Arizona at the time. And I was shocked at all the cotton fields. I had never seen a cotton field before. Uh, I had not made it down to any, uh, any of the southern states. And I, I always assumed that cotton was something that was grown primarily in the southern states. So it really shocked me the first time I seen acreage after acreage of cotton fields out in Arizona. It just yeah, doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, cotton cotton is uh, one of the biggest things uh, in Pinal County. It was uh, they actually had a big Hanes factory out there at one time. Uh, it was uh, one of the biggest uh, things. They had a, another little town called Randolph, and it was all black. And back in the uh, I want to say late eighteen hundreds or whatever, they uh, they all came out here to pick cotton. And uh, it was uh, during the Dust Bowl and all that area. They uh, area area time. They. Um, they were all cotton pickers, you know. You had all these uh, poor families out here hand picking cotton, and then you know, obviously, they invented the cotton gin and um, tractors and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's a very rural, uh, desolate kind of community. So what? Okay, what weight were you early on in your amateur career? So you, you're getting your oh. squidge as a freshman. So what? What? What weight are you there? I, I was bulking up to 185 pounds, and uh, the the no max. Yeah, the maximum weight was 98 pounds. I don't know if you remember that, but 98 pounds was the smallest weight class they had. I weighed 85 pounds. So I uh, I never had to cut weight to make 98 pounds. I was literally the 98-pound weakling. Uh, got picked on. Uh, dramatically, I got picked on, man. I was uh, always getting picked on. I was the smallest kid in school. I, I never, I would I could have never imagined. I, 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 w I was assuming you would have been somewhere in those lightweight ranks, but I didn't never have pitched you at 85 pounds. Yeah, 85 pounds. A... And then in my senior year, I wrestled at 112, and I was 112 pounds. That's what I walked around at, and that's what I wrestled at, because I couldn't beat, I couldn't beat that kid that was above me or below me, so I was stuck <laughs> at, I was stuck at 112. What, 
what do you think of a sport like amateur wrestling just for just for the character traits that it develops? Look, I'm going to say that wrestling, if you ever wrestled, then you could do anything. I mean, if, if you guys know me and my story, I was in the military. I've trained with uh, tier one guys, Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, Special Forces guys. And if you can wrestle, you can do anything because wrestling is literally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And also, I think that if you put wrestling down on your resume, then you're more apt to get hired because uh, coaches or, or uh, potential employers know that if you wrestled, you're you're probably a good you have work ethic and that you you know you're you're a hard worker because you can't be lazy and be a wrestler. Exactly. No, I get I I I I've said that all the time, but I always like to know that when I have a guest that's on and I know they got that that background. I want I want other people to hear it. It's not just Dan Seven, it's just beating the drum of amateur wrestling because even if you go into other sports, like there's a lot of uh high school football players they'll go into say college football i should say the high school wrestlers that go into college football things of that nature they, they do well if, if a college coach finds out that you're a football player slash wrestler oh they know again that work ethic and the fact that oh you'll, you'll be one of the first people in in on those tackles and uh just things of that nature I like to get out there and mix it up yeah absolutely you know i tell kids you know i, I go to, to uh, schools all over the country i do anti-bully assemblies i talk to them you know guest speaking as as a just you know like a role model kind of give them a just say hey you know i was there these are the choices i made in my life and this is what i did kind of just uh giving them some you know advice uh but i tell them man if you wrestle it's literally the hardest thing i ever did in my life but it was the best thing i ever did in my life um i don't think i would be who i am today without uh my high school uh wrestling uh, coaches and uh, the guys that actually, you know, put me through the grind. I, I think yeah. I I gave everything to wrestling. And and these are again in, in my own life experiences. They're some of the, the 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 closest friends I still have to this day. These friendships I made back in high school, college, or any other team I've been on that that toured here or toured there. I I still reach out to them, and we're still in contact in some way because it, it's kind of like. It builds that camaraderie. You now, know? now, now, I know you wrestled, uh, you know, all through junior high, high school, college. But did Don, Don, did you wrestle in uh, high school as well? Yeah, I, Dan and I both started in the ninth grade. Yeah. Okay. I'm, so you were, you didn't wrestle in junior high. You wrestled no. in high school. Yes. Yeah. Started as a freshman. Yeah. And then what about college? You wrestled in college? Yeah, wrestling college, yeah. Yeah. And then when did the judo come in? Because I know that you 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 train in judo as well, right? Yeah, I, I after college wrestling was done, I did a year and a half pro boxing. And then I got out of sports for a couple of years. Then I heard about a judo uh, club up on Fort Huachuga. So I went up to Fort Huachuga, joined the judo club up there. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I knew. I knew. I knew that. I didn't know that you wrestled. So okay. So that's good. I knew you wrestled later, okay, but I didn't know. But what, what, what was the intriguing school. factor about that, Don? Because again, I I know that you had some judo, but I, I guess I never really asked you the question as to what intrigued you about, uh, you know, something because because you'd never done it before. Then all of a sudden you got you got some buddies that are saying, "Hey, come on out and try judo." What what what, uh, what intrigued you about that? Uh, just to get the hell out of the house. I was in a bad marriage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, you know, when I was done working, and uh, <laughs> no, I don't, if I didn't want to go home, I'd go to the judo club. <laughs> okay, you, you usually you know, shared about this about that time. I simply go and 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 Don, what kind of marital advice do you have for the young man at this point? Type <laughs> get up. up. <laughs> don't do it <laughs> <laughs> i just i i needed my center Where, where's my drums at i just want to go doo -doo -doo. Mm, yeah ding, 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 Don, ding. was it was it hard for you to transfer from wrestling into judo because you had to wear the pajamas you know uh the gi and all that no nah, it didn't bother me at all uh, yeah and i didn't it didn't bother me either you know i did i, I did a little bit of judo with christoph leninger up here in phoenix and then um you know i've been doing jiu-jitsu for almost 30 years with, with carlos machado Actually, getting ready to get my fifth degree black belt um, next month. Really That's cool. Yeah, fifth degree, yeah. man. Five strikes. I mean, Machado. So they they've got to be they they got one of the best reputations in uh, you know jujitsu. So well, their their uncle invented jujitsu. You know, Brazilian jujitsu that we know today. I mean, their uncle invented it. I mean, their family is the Gracies and the Machados are all together. They, I mean, they invented it. So I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's kind of cool coming from their lineage because it's literally Orion Gracie. Um, Helio and then 
Carlos. I mean, and then me. So it's it's kind of cool. No, no, I, that, that I get that. That that's great because I always tell people that you know, you just gotta when you look at the martial arts, you gotta look at what is going to be the more practical martial art that you can actually utilize in an actual physical altercation. And I always tell people you can't walk down the sidewalk carrying a pair of nunchucks, a bow staff, or you know some some throwing stars without drawing a little bit of attention to yourself. But uh, <laughs> when you've got Grappling right. skills, you got striking skills, kicking skills. People just don't know that about you. You can wear everyday type of clothing and uh, you could still protect yourself. Yeah, and you know, carry around little pine boards going, here, hold this, let me break this board. <laughs> don't tell my <laughs> intimidate them, yes. T.I. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? What'd you say, Don? See how tough I am? <laughs> yeah, see how tough I am. I break this board. Oh man, yeah. that's some crazy stuff, or, man. Or just that's or where 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 your belt go? Did you see my belt here right now? I've yeah. got right, uh, right. I, I I'm a third degree purple belt here with uh, you know three sashes here right now. And then they go, okie dokie. Stand back. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. So, so I, the can, can you go ahead. I'm sorry. So 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 you mentioned earlier I have more MMA fights than anybody that's living. Yes. Um, you know I I, I have to say that uh, there was a guy. Who, who has more fights than I do, actually. But, you know, he passed away, so no longer with us. So uh, his record, you know, is what it is. But as for living MMA fighters that are still living today, I have the most. And then my man right here, Dan Severn, you're number two. You got number two. And then Jeremy Horn, and, uh, a couple other guys. So, yeah, we've been doing this quite a while, man. I, uh, yeah. I, um, I, I, you know, I tell people that I really – Oh, a lot to you because you took me under your wing and, you know, you're the one that got me out to a uh, super brawl out in Hawaii, um, fighting in my first like big major event um, and kind of just watched you, how you set up, how you talk to people, how you put up a booth, you sell a t-shirt, you have trading cards, you got eight by tens. And man, I really picked your brain and I learned all that, man. <laughs> I mean, I was, I literally was nobody in the MMA world, but I had a trading card. I had an eight by 10. I had a t-shirt and man, I pushed myself, you know, self-promotion. And then, uh, I really owe a big shout out to Don Fry because if it wasn't for my buddy, Don, I would have never gotten pride, you know, cause Don's the one that, uh, set that up with, uh, Antonio Noki and got me to go over there and fight Sakuraba in, uh, in pride. And, you know, I, without that, uh, without you obviously breaking me into the sport without Don uh, making that call and giving me that opportunity, man, I, I, I definitely would not be who I am today. Yeah. But you, you've got, Chad, you've got, you've got great people skills. You've got, again, you, as I say, you're, you're the master of, of that cell phone. You can put together some of the best marketing materials that I have ever seen. It's kind of going, I just wish I had a fraction of those skills as I'm that Neanderthal here when it comes to that kind of stuff. But no, you're, you deserve all the things you get because I mean, people could have, could have said no, but the fact that they may not have known about you at that point in time, but the fact that you let them know where you're yeah. at and then what other people that will, that will vouch for you on top of that, that all, right. you know, it's, that's where again, it, it's, uh, uh, as I always say that, uh, uh, you're, you're like Mr. Miyagi and you've mm. snatched the pebble from the hand and you've taken it out to a whole different level there. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying. And you know, I'm still out here doing it. So, so what I got coming up is, uh, June 8th, I'm going over to Qatar to the Middle East. I got, I, you know, I haven't, I'm done doing MMA. I, I really, I, I love MMA, but man, my body is just broken down. You know, my back, my knees and stuff, man. MMA is tough. Hardest, hardest damn sport there is in the world. But that being said, I get a phone call from Quentin Jackson and he says, Hey, do you want to fight Daryl Shunover? This guy I used to call titties on uh, the ultimate fighter. And you I call, go, you yeah. call, you call, you called what? He called him titties because he had, you know, kind of, <laughs> Big jug. <laughs> I, I, I was. I, I had to make sure there was. Was it yeah, kiddies? Yeah. It was like. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. was there a K right. or a T here? That okay. Was, that wasn't me calling him. That was Quentin. Quentin called okay. him that. Okay. So, so, so Quentin calls me and says, "Hey, I'm fighting Shannon Briggs, professional boxing over in Qatar in the Middle East, June eighth. Um, would you like to fight this guy?" And I go, "Well, you know, I'm kind of done fighting." And he, then he told me what he was going to pay me, and I said, "Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll do ten. <laughs> I'll do ten rounds, no problem, baby. <laughs> I, I'm ready." So, <laughs> so for the last five weeks, I've been uh, doing two a day trainings. I've dropped twenty pounds. Um, wow. I'm walking around and lean two hundred and twenty. I was two forty, and now I'm two twenty, just lean and mean. And um, to be honest with you, man, I feel really great, and it, it feels good to be back in the gym. I uh, I haven't missed a step, man. I I, I feel really good. 
there seems to be a, a, a lot of, I'll call these celebrity uh, type of uh, boxing events that are taking place. And I mean, you, you've got, you got the Tyson fight that that's coming up with uh, him and Jake uh, Paul. With, with Jake Paul. Um, but, but, you know, Jake Paul has, has done other uh, boxing matches with other MMA guys. And uh, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm interested to hear your take on who, I mean, you, you, there is a big age difference. What is it? 30 years. I think age difference between uh, the two of them, but then you've got, we're talking about Mike Tyson here right now. And right. I'm, I'm just curious as to what, there, there comes a point of, in a person's career, there's just, you know, skill sets start to diminish. It just, it just it's father time. No matter what, how good you were at one point, there, father time taketh away. So what uh, sure. What do you think about that whole match? Sure. I, I mean, I think father time does have a, uh, it plays a part, but you got to remember, Mike Tyson's been boxing for so long. It's like if you were to tie up with somebody, your tie up is going to be, I mean, you could do that in your with your eyes closed. You just tie up with somebody. I, I think his boxing skills, is at a level that Jake Paul is not even at. So Jake Paul is probably here. He's young. He can he can box. He can hit hard. But Mike Tyson is here. I mean, he, he's not just a boxer. He's an elite boxer. He was the you know Olympic guy, and then he was um, the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, he's here. He's not on a le le level playing field. I think his skill level is just too far above. I mean, yeah. uh, you got a good high. You got a good high school wrestler. And then you had an Olympic gold medalist wrestler. Who's going to win? You know, that Olympic wrestlers had a whole nother level. So I I, 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 I think Tyson goes in there and just wipe, wipes him up. Just yeah, I mean, we'll get this, uh, that, that way, the, the Tyson w was a great uh, boxer, but he was a knockout artist. Uh, no one, I don't think anyone could, could generate the type of power in his short punches, the way he was good, uh, I, I, again, I've, I've seen some recent clips of him training. I'm like, going, oh, I, I still wouldn't want to get hit by none of that stuff. No, you know? no, no. He's still throwing hard and throws fast. And uh, I just don't think Jake Paul's ever ever felt that power. I mean, if it, it, however it goes, it, I wish them both well. I mean, I love Jake Paul for what he's doing because he's making boxing fun again. People are interested in it again. Um, yes. I, I I can't I, I used to didn't like I used to not like the guy because he was just a loud mouth but you know what the kid can actually fight um he's knocked out a couple people that I was very impressed that he knocked out um were they real fights who did he knock out who did he knock out that you're impressed by um <laughs> that's funny Tyrone I just now <laughs> well, 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 Ty, to me Tyrone Woodley's tough man and and you know I saw Tyrone Woodley. Do a lot of MMA matches and never, you never really got rocked. But again, Tyrone is a wrestler in a boxing match, so uh, he he just got caught. You know what I mean? Um, when, when you put when you put when you put Jake Paul with another boxer, purely boxer, he didn't fare. He didn't win. He didn't win. Actually, he lost. So uh, I think the game, I'm not going to take anything from Jake Paul because you know what? He's he's making a ton of money. He's giving the opportunities for other people to make money. Yes. Um. You know, I I give it to him. My hats off to him. Um. Is it a freak show? Is it is it exhibition? Is it entertainment? Absolutely. And but I like it. And you know what? I'll I'll watch the Mike Tyson fight. I I'm a fan of Mike Tyson. I want to watch him fight. So when when's your fight? June what? Uh, June eighth. So yeah, yeah, yeah got that's, another eight weeks. It's in Qatar. Yeah, it's in Doha. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and I, I'm thinking, will that be broadcast back to the states? I mean, is this? Yeah, yeah, gonna... yeah. That's gonna that, that'll be a pay per view. It's on Fight TV, so it, yeah, it'll be a pay per view. I don't know how much you're in charge, but yeah, it'll be a pay per view. Yeah, I'm on the that... I'm, I'm on the card. Shannon Briggs versus Quentin Jackson. Chet Congo is fighting on the card. A couple other names are gonna, they're going to release next week. Um, yeah, it's gonna. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good card, and you know they're putting up a lot of money to make. Uh, I think Qatar is going to be the next Las Vegas. I mean, everyone is doing the stuff in Saudi Arabia, in uh, Dubai, and Abu Dhabi. I think Qatar is going to be the next big spot. No, I, I, I can't. Oh, oh, how many I, I, rounds? I, I, how many rounds is are you boxing? Uh, are ten, ten, it's a ten round boxing match. Three three minute rounds, one minute rest, ten rounds. How heavy gloves? Uh, ten ounce gloves. Ten ounce gloves. Okay. Yeah. 
we're fighting heavyweight. So, aren't they? Aren't they usually eight ounce gloves? Um, no, for this they 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 gave us ten ounce. I mean, usually yeah, yeah eight ounce, but they yeah. they said ten ounce. Okay. I don't know who I don't know who picked the gloves. I don't care. I mean, I'll fight bare knuckle. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter to me. Right. Well, <laughs> that's that's how you kind of started. Did did you in, yeah. in your in your whole career was doing the bare knuckle aspect? So give give, oh, yeah, that's, give, that's, give that's a little bit insight on on that, on that part. Literally, how I got started is bare knuckle uh, fighting down in Mexico, Valley Tudo style. Style, um, no rules, no rounds, no weight class. Uh, obviously, you guys know that. Um, but they had the chicken fights, the dog fights, and then the people would fight. And by the time the people fought, everybody was drunk. And, I mean, they had their little pistols out. And if you got paid, you you made 500 bucks. So, I mean, it was uh, it was a pretty interesting weekend. I, I guarantee, guarantee that. We go go down to Douglas and Nogales. Don, did you ever do that? Over in Nogales, they had the Plaza de Toros. And they had they they literally was just human cockfighting, man. It was yeah. It was crazy. No, Cause not, you're down in Terra Vista, so that was kind of close by you down there. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty close, seventy miles away. Yeah, shoot, man, I drove up here from Tempe to go down from Tempe to Nogales to do that on the weekend. I mean, that's how I put myself through college, fighting every weekend. Nuts. Well, okay, let's talk a little bit more about your education, your college that you went to. Yeah, I went to Alcoa. Well, first of all, I went to Central Arizona College, played baseball. Then I couldn't uh, – I made the team, but I, I I obviously didn't get a scholarship, so I had to work. Um, I was working at I, Safeway. I, actually, I, did, I did not know this part, part about you, that you played baseball yeah, there. Yeah, okay. I played co college baseball there. And then uh, all through high school, I had a job uh, working at Safeway. I was a night stalker. So from uh, 11 at night to 7 in the morning, I would stock the shelves at Safeway. And uh, trying to do that and go to college, and it just it, I had to pick either school or college. I mean, school or baseball, but I I, I really couldn't because I had to pay rent. I had to, you know, I wasn't, I didn't come from a wealthy family. We didn't have a scholarship, so uh, I had to work. Uh, did two years at Central Arizona College, then I went up here to Tempe, and I went to uh, Al Collins Graphic Design School. That's where I ended up getting my degree in computer graphics, desktop publishing. Um, then I started working at the prison. After the prison, I joined the military. I got in the army. After I got out of the army, I went over to Iraq. I was a bodyguard for the United States ambassador, working for Blackwater, doing private security. Worked with Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Donald Rumsfeld. Um, been doing security off and on for the last, you know, 25 years. Um, and fighting, fighting MMA. Well, at the time, it was NHB, no holds barred. You guys know that. And uh, been fighting the whole but, time. But how, how quickly are, are uh, young people forget? Because it's... Uh... We have a very forgetful youth anymore, and they they forget almost as quickly as it comes out and it is said. Look, if if you don't know the ultimate fighter, then they don't know who who we are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you you. I, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and I had mentioned Marco Huas. I said, "Hey, you remember a guy named Marco Huas?" And they were like, "Who?" And I'm like, "Really? You don't know? You need your homework is to go Google Marco Huas because the guy yeah. had the amazing leg kicks. Man, this this guy had massive thin hands." And you know he was a good leg kicker, so uh, <laughs> yeah. But a lot, lot of that boils, a lot of that boils down to the education that our yes. schools are teaching out, and and are are these schools are they falling underneath the pressures of, of being woke and uh, transgender, uh, uh, obliging? I, I guess I don't even know the work word I, I'm looking for. Accommodating to uh, these uh, uh, this this movement that it seems to be going across the United States. Well, the thing is, you know, kids, like when we were kids, you, Don, myself, I'm sure you had parents that if you didn't go out and work and do your chores, your dad was going to handle you when he got home. Um, the kids aren't like that anymore. I mean, it's OK, I, mean, I, I want you to be a little more bold. How was Pops going to handle you? Well, Pops is going to come in the room and say and he's going to straight up ask you, why didn't you do what you were told to do? Um, and then you're going to lie or you're going to tell them the truth. And either way, we're going to end up with a whooping. And yes, when I say a whooping, you, it was a belt. It was a fly swatter. It was a, my mom's shoe. Uh, it was literally anything that was close by. Um, and I'm not saying that he would beat me, but you, no. you definitely got hit, man. And, and it made you think about the next time you actually do something. Do I want to get whooped again or do I want to do the chore? I think yeah. I'm going to do the chore. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and again, the reason I was kind of pressuring that was simply the fact that there were repercussions. Well, you had choices. Either, you yeah. had choices. And whatever choice you made had a consequence. If yes. you 
If you chose not to do the chore, there was a consequence. Yeah. If you chose to do the chore, there was a consequence. So yeah, yeah there was yeah. you have your own what would be more, that positive consequence, what would be the negative consequence? I, I told the story there a, a couple of times before, but I remember I had to be sitting in, in the kitchen and I, I was kind of and my mother's on the side and she 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 had this big butcher knife out there because she was cutting up uh we had we, we had cattle on the farm, so she's she's carved up on, on this big old chunk of beef that's laying out, out on the counter, stuff like that. And I'm I'm sitting across from her and I'm just pissing and moaning about blah 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 this, blah blah that, like that. And she didn't miss a beat. As she's carved away, she reaches right across that counter and hits me with that with that big old uh uh knife. On the flat side, just goes whack, slaps me right there and goes right back there. And I pull back. I'm like, Mom, you you could have. And she looks right back. She goes, yeah, I could have, but I didn't know, did I? I go, <laughs> and it's like going, now, now and she's like, now, now get your ass out there and get the chores done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, this, it just shows there's repercussions. And that's what, what's the repercussions most kids in the United States, what, what's the repercussions they get? Yeah. Uh, I don't even think they get time out. I don't think they're getting their uh, devices taken away. I don't, yeah, I think, I think literally they're, they're, they feel obligated. Like they, they need something like that. You deserve to get this. Why am I not getting my allowance? Why am I not doing it? It's like, you can't tell them no. Like these young people now, they've never heard the word no ever. Don, what was it? What was it like growing up with you, Don? If you told your mom or dad, you know, if, you, if your dad told you to do a chore and you didn't do it, what what would he do? He'd put knots on my head. He'd put knots on your head, right? Yeah, yeah, if you right. If, if you back talk to your mom or you lied to your mom or dad, well, I bet you had uh, you get your butt head. blistered, right? Yeah, put knots on my head all the way. Yeah, you you uh -oh. might come up missing. <laughs> might might have your picture on, on a milk carton. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, see, that's, what, that's I, what I would say. They do not bother to return later on it, too. Yeah. See, that's what I think is wrong with our society today is there's no parents that are, are making their kids mind, making them make the good choices. I mean, you can have the choice to be good or bad, but if you didn't have that instilled in you as a kid, that's that's what's wrong with America today. I mean, everyone is uh they've never been told no. And they they've never had to work for anything, they don't appreciate what they have. Um, it, it, our our world has literally gone to hell. It's 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 just crazy. It's not like how we grew up. You know what I mean? The, the America that I grew up in in the eighties, um, it, it's, it's not it's not like that now, and it's it's sad. It's it's really sad. Oh no, it's terrible. I mean, you you don't have anybody to look up to. You know? Yeah, exactly. You don't have role models and stuff. Right. You know the the role models we have now. Are, uh, the military, for an example, if you if you if you watched the other day, I, I was watching the news and they had a guy from Space Force in a dress. What the hell? Some guy's wearing a dress and he's a like a general or, or yeah, like a general wearing a dress. A general? Me? Yeah, yeah. He was a general, but he was a transgender. Um, I, I mean, look, man, if you're a man and you want to wear a dress, that's your problem. That's that's totally fine if that's what you want to do, but don't make me accept it. I don't. It ain't that's weird, man. That's weird. No, it's because you're you got you're mentally insane, you know. I mean, you gotta make me part of it, you know. So. Yeah, right. And and you know what? They have all these uh, gay holidays and you know whatever pride. Okay, uh, that's fine. If you want to be gay or homosexual, that's fine. I don't care. Just don't put it on me. We don't have a straight holiday. I don't celebrate that. Me and my wife are straight and we're a, a couple. I don't I don't push it down your throat. I'm not turning on the TV and you you, you see to gay people kissing all the time. It's like every single commercial, it's transgender, it's mixed gender, and it's and it's gay. Yeah. There's 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 no one that's literally the straight white guy. But where is that anymore? Where is that in America? It's not that's it's evil. not here. That's, that's the evil person. You know. Oh yeah, and, and if you are enemy. if you're a straight white guy, you're a racist. And yeah. I, I don't I don't get it. I don't I don't understand it. It's weird. That's just not how I was raised. It's, it's weird. We're just look, at, look at some of the great comedy shows that used to be on, like Archie Bunker, Edith. Uh, the Jeffersons. Had, yeah, the yeah, Jeffersons, Jeffersons. Man, that was hilarious. I used Tampered to love that show. Yeah, Tempered and Son. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you couldn't, yeah, you no, can't it, put it, that it, on it, TV anymore. Yeah. That wouldn't fly now. You can't put that on TV. <laughs>
I, I see. I think crazy. they should put it on TV and just go back. Remember when you know it's okay to poke fun at everybody and, and right. anybody because it's like you said, put your big boy pants or put your big girl pants back on. You know whatever well, happened to, to the cliche: well, yeah. sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Now, now it's kind of like, going, oh my gosh, you you violated my rights and blah blah blah. You know, get a grip. Well, you 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 tweeted something. You you got a mean tweet. Yeah, well, well, you were talking about that before about bullying because with the internet, oh yeah, you have a it's, whole it's, whole it's, new it's, level of bullying. It's a whole new level, man. Kids are committing suicide because they didn't get likes. You know, um, if if they don't get they they put on a video or something, they don't get a certain amount of likes. Some of them will go in there and tell them that they were they that they should die and that we don't like you or whatever. Their the self esteem on these kids right now is so low that they Fragile. literally they they go. And they get mom or dad's gun and they blow their head off and it, it's it's got to stop you know it's got to stop i don't know about you dan i don't know about you don but growing up you know i was bullied i i got picked on every single day in seventh grade i was gonna commit suicide i had a rope around my neck getting ready to jump off a tree limb i was gonna, really i was i never yeah, know this there shannon I was, gonna, wow. I, was gonna, I was gonna kill myself man i i man it, seventh, it was, you said it was seventh so grade. bad seventh grade i was in junior high and um you weighed 90 so, pounds and he used a clothesline or yeah, 80, 85 pounds. And now, you know, see, see, see how mean, and, and see how mean Don is it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. You didn't do it right, did yeah. you? Yeah. You can't do anything. Yeah, I didn't do it right. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, but that's that's why I'm such an advocate against bullying, man. I hate bullies, man. If I see somebody yeah. being a bully, I want to go in there and, and slap them. You know, I, I hate bullies, man. It's yeah, just, we were all bullied and we all fucking survived. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But what about the kids that were bullied and they didn't survive? You know what I mean? It's like, well, I, I think bullies need to. Let me, let me put it this way. Kids need to go to a regular school and get picked on and learn how to defend themselves and learn how to deal with it, because that makes you tough. That gives you thick skin. But they're, 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 I if I saw kids getting bullied. I would hope the bull the kids getting bullied will stand up for themselves and learn to fight back. And that was my problem. I never fought back. I I had one of those parents that was a hippie, and she told me if I if I didn't turn the other cheek, if I if I fought at school, I was gonna get in more trouble at home. So I was that kid that would be walking down the hall, and people would pick on me because I would never fight back. So that I did that until I was a senior, and in my senior year, I was like, I had enough of this. I, I'm I'm hitting you back. You hit me, I'm hitting you back. Oh, did okay, okay. That day of that reckoning, how did that feel after you finally did wreak havoc on someone that was pushing you beyond? Well, your I had mental. I had to yeah, did I you had, help her pick up her purse. Yeah, I I had the cannon locked up in a, in, inside me, and I, I <laughs> yeah. let him out. I let the cannon out, and when I did it, it did feel good. You know, I uh, it felt good, and I never got picked on again ever. Yeah, no, that's you, you, you know, they're, 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 I always say that everyone has that day of reckoning where that's the reckoning. They, 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 right. they've they been they've been pushed, they've been pushed, they've been pushed. It's like when you're you're at that that crossroads. What do I do? What do I do? It's when you finally kind of like when you go berserk at that point yeah. in time. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you fight back. Just fuck. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly, and that's and that's what I try to tell that's, people. That's about. winning right there. Winning, fighting is winning. You know. Whether you win the fight or you lose the fight, you're still a fucking winner because you got in, involved in it, you know. Right, because you fought back. You weren't. Yeah. You were a harder target. You weren't. You didn't just sit right. there and get beat up. Yeah, yeah. They were. Well, they were going to use you as I call it, a speed a speed bump in life. You know, and that's where again you did you didn't allow them to roll over you uh, once once again. No, that's that's a tough. That is a tough thing for people to do, especially is that in the world that we live in nowadays. It's all. It's not the actual the physicality of it anymore. Uh, depends on the, again with just the the internet. That's even worse shit. That's where, you know, it's hard for parents to be the even even buffer because how many kids have all got cell phones? You know, they they yeah. all seem to have some kind of electronic device, and you can't. It's hard to simply just turn off the the, the night light and know that uh, they're not going to look at their their cell phone during the course of the night. They're not going to look at their laptop during the course of the night. It's uh there's just so many things at their fingertips. The world is at their fingertips when you when you have something like that. So yeah, absolutely. So Don, when can we get you up here to Phoenix? What for? Well, I'll take you out shooting, man. We gotta, we gotta. Do we gotta where do I want to go to Phoenix for? Fuck. Well, go shoot, go shoot, man. I got a, I got right. a really nice, really nice fifty cal 
that's mounted on a Humvee with a silencer on it. Oh, and, uh, you talked me into it. And then, you know, we got, we got, you know, 30 or 40 fully automatic MP5, AK-47s, uh, 308s, 223s, 5.56s. Um, wait, wait, who is it? You? You got a mouse in your pocket? or No, me me and George uh, Ursham. Or George owns Cape Creek Guns and those battle-tested equipment. They make uh, custom AR-15s, um, yeah. and, and they're called battle-tested because he sends them all downrange, and they've all been tested downrange, so they battle-tested. Um, when when Donald Trump Jr. comes to town, we take him out shooting. Uh, the last time he was here, we we all went out went out shooting with Donald Trump Jr. and his son, and we had a good time, man. He, cool. I, I'd like to invite you because we have Sheriff Lamb, and Sheriff Lamb is now running for the Senate. Right. Uh, yeah. So 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 we get Lamb to come out, Don Jr. to come out. We can invite you to come out. I'd invite Don Dan, but I don't think Dan likes guns, so I don't know. Who do you think I am? I'm a purse wielded type of uh, liberal here in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you like that. Man. I, 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 I don't think you've ever hunted. Did you ever hunt? I grew up on a 120 acre farm. So did that mean you hunted? Yeah. Okay. He hunted at the bakery. Yeah, yeah. See, see, well, hey, all hey. done, see what you just thought is you just released Don that we're not that this uh, the Don's gonna just pop chop me here left and right. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a 120 acre farm to where it was like 80 tillable acres and the rest of it was like woods, creeks, things of that nature. So it was like a, a Tom Sawyer type of a uh, uh, of a lifestyle. All day. Fish hunt. I mean, I didn't even know you needed a license until I was in junior high. Oh and okay. then and all of a sudden the little um Petitions going around, not petition, but but the flyer about an upcoming gun class. This was before when you could actually bring your gun to school. To school. Oh yeah, and they were they, they were talking about you know the NRA and, and I had, they, I, they go through a, a, a hunting class with you. you know? Dude, I had a, I had a truck and on my in the back of my truck I had a gun rack. I had gun my rack. gun in my in school. I had a gun rack with a gun on it at school. I mean, come on, <laughs> you can't do that now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, it's just it's just times times have changed. It, it, it's uh, I think for for all the wrong reasons, but uh, yeah. You know, yeah, pretty, it's uh, no, it, pretty it, nuts. it is a, a great, great time going up there towards like what you name, you name the guns, nothing like the kind of artillery that you're talking about with shotguns, 22s, you know, 30 outs. Well, then we'll, 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 we'll invite you out too, Dan. I think we'll have fun, man. We make a rank okay, yeah. out of it. Just yeah, you guys out. are be giving me a court gun over there. So I can see this right now. Look, little, little court gun, a little Daisy BB gun, <laughs> the Daisy BB gun. Yeah, you don't shoot your eye out. Yeah, exactly. See, I simply do the moment I said this. If Don's gonna be right on cue, I I I can't write this stuff quick enough for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one what? thing we haven't talked about here yet. Okay, Shannon the Cannon, and now movie career. When yeah, did man, this all you know start what? out? Because I mean, you you've worked with a lot of wonderful people, but you know you're you're going you're going gangbusters in that direction now too. Man, this all started. I saw I saw. Don Fry in a movie and uh, he was playing an inmate and he was bald and I'm like Don how did you get in the movies and so he told me a little bit but yeah man my dream has always been a movie star you know what I mean I I think every fighter wants to be a movie star and every movie star wants to be a fighter it's it's just weird but um you know I started with iCarly numbers Walker Texas Rangers CSI Las Vegas the old uh, the, the ultimate soldier challenge on the history channel then I got into movies. So far, I've done twenty movies. I got nine movies getting ready to come out. Um, wow. Man, I've done a ton of ton of stuff. I've been thankful. I got my SAG card, so now I'm a full fledged union actor, um, stunt man actor. Um, started doing stunts, and now I'm more into acting. I'm actually getting roles now with lines, so that that's cool, man. And uh, I've worked with some big names like uh, Mel Gibson, um, Mickey Rourke, Michael Jai White, Frank Grillo, Kevin Dillon, Bruce Willis. Uh, yeah, it's Cuba Gooding Jr. It's good stuff. I I see your your boots just entered, entered the room. Right, just he came in right behind you. What's 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 he's doing a cameo here real quick. So what's 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 your boots name? Oh, <laughs> that was Sunny, I think. Okay, uh, yep. I just saw yeah. it goes through because you know yeah. Don's uh, Don's uh, uh, Quinn tends to do a cameo every now and then, but but now Quinn has now a. Partner in crime, and and I'm not certain if I if I even know the uh, the, the name of uh, Quinn's uh, new partner, Quinn uh, Huckleberry, Huckle oh, Quinn and Huckleberry, Huck oh, Quinn and Huckleberry, yep. 
Well, actually, Don, so again, I, there's Quinn right there. So if she is making her cameo here today, yeah, she is making it. Hey, Don, do you still have that um that stuffed bear, that bear <laughs> rug? The bear. <laughs> I I came to your house one time and and it scared the shit out of me. It was a it was a bear that was on the floor. It was yeah. a huge bear, man. I was like, that is a real bear. I was like, I couldn't believe it. That was the coolest thing, man. Yeah, so, it's still there and yeah. stuffed. He's alive. I just, he's just too scared to move. Yeah, that's that's hilarious, man. That was <laughs> that was cool. And then people don't realize that Don the Predator Fry got his nickname from his dog. Is yeah. that right, Don? Yeah, that's right. That's you right. got your nickname from the Predator, right? Yeah, from my because my first bulldog. You know, you pull those big jowls back and it looked like the Predator when he took off his helmet. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so I that's named, some, I named that some, family dog. There's some history right there, some trivia, some yeah. MMA trivia. Holy crap. Yeah, that's a good looking dog right there, man. Uh oh. Well, we got a Mexican question here. What do uh -oh. you think about Anthony Joshua knocking out Sangano in the second round of their boxing match? I thought it was great. You know, again, I wanted to see that fight. I think Francis Nagano is a, a fantastic athlete, but again, you got to uh -huh. remember. It's a boxer versus MMA fighter, a guy who's just learning right. how to box. Anthony Joshua, I mean, he's been boxing his whole entire life. So it's like, can can, can Francis Nagano hit hard? Absolutely. He can hit super hard. And he did Great pretty point. good. And he did pretty good. Um, but he, he's not a boxer. He's learning how to box. But right. you got to remember, right. Joshua's been boxing his whole entire life. So to right. put those guys in, it's like apples and oranges. It, it, it doesn't compete. But um, I thought it was a great fight. I, I love to watch it. It was, it was yeah. great. And I'll watch him fight again. Yeah. I, I want to know what you guys thought about this new movie that just came out. It's called Roadhouse. I haven't seen it. I don't think Actually, it will. I just I just watched it. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought it I thought it was good. I mean, it like wasn't you know a five star movie, but I, I enjoyed it. And, <laughs> and, Conor, and Conor McGregor did a great job. He was hilarious. Conor, Conor McGregor stole the show. He to yeah. me was uh, yeah. he just playing himself, literally yep. just being a badass and just playing himself, some crazy Irish guy. But the 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 plot, the the movie, uh, it was horrible. It was trash. But yeah. really, I, mean, yeah, I, I saw. Was, I mean, well, I saw the, the original movie. I, I missed you know, you know years ago. Oh, the, I, the, I the thought, original was great, man. I, I mean, you can't. Yeah. I mean, the, the original was great. I've, I've watched it, you know, five hundred times, but. Uh, this this movie they changed it completely. It wasn't anything yeah. like the the original script. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, I, I mainly enjoyed it probably because of Connor's performance was great. Yeah, yeah, Connor did a great job. In yeah, it. but yeah, um, I agree with you. The the and then too, like I, they, they always got to change a man to a girl, and you know, and a, and, and, and think about the the rich guy that came in that was the, that was gonna buy the roadhouse and put up a a resort. I think they should have had Chel Sonnen play that guy. That was a Chel Sonnen part. Yeah, um, that would have been way like, better. That. Yeah, because yeah, this, was a, this, was a, was like this was a pussy. Yeah, this guy was an actor who didn't, you know, try to be a tough guy and, and, and talk shit. No one could talk shit like Chel Sonnen. I think Chel Sonnen would have stole the show and been a great uh, actor for that part. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, Connor did a great job, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I, uh, I'm the two thumbs up. I'm going to give it two thumbs down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So save save my quarter, huh? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Save your quarter. Yeah, Connor's like I said, Connor's opening scene was great when he finally came into the movie. Yeah, great. yeah, he yeah he did he did pretty good. Well, since they're not going to watch it, I guess you know. Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah. It's this opening scene. He's cheating. He just like got caught. He's jumping out of a balcony because he was cheating on a girl. The oh, yeah. and the guy's like, "What are you doing?" He's running off, you know, and he's like naked, and he runs off. Is still walking down the street with, naked in Thailand with his strut, you know, <laughs> the Connor strut that he has. It's pretty funny. It's a great opening yeah. scene. I heard that yeah. they actually covered his whole body, um, like with paint, and then gave him new tattoos because he doesn't have his regular tattoos. Like oh, yeah. he totally covered his body. It took like three, four hours of every day to do. Yeah. Yeah, but he good did stuff. a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. That's 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 probably that's why I enjoyed the movie part the most is because he was hilarious and just, just him talking shit and he did a good job. So what's what's going on with you, Don? What what do you got coming up new? Got anything new going on? Uh, well, yeah, we're going to New Jersey. Oh, next, new Jersey when? next month on the twentieth, April twentieth, four twenty. We're gonna be doing a thing called 
um, the Misfit Festival at the Meadowlands. Yeah. Don's do it's like a sign autograph signing thing. Yeah, an autograph signing. So Don Fry Don Fry would make an appearance in New Jersey in yeah. on April twentieth. Okay. April twentieth. Okay. Yep. And that's yeah. in New Jersey. Yeah, I got, I got Jersey, a new bulldog bed. too. I got so now I got two bulldogs, you know. I gotta go pick her up. I just had her uh she had an uh she had a hernia, so I had to get that fixed. You know? Oh, you got the vet? Yeah, I got her from a breeder. A breeder and guy bred her the old the old gal bred her out and then want to get rid of her so i said fuck i'll take her you know ah people are just garbage you know yeah get their money else you know out of an animal and then to get rid of it you know yeah just people are unbelievable well you still got the just like being still, married you, <laughs> you, you you still got the horses no 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 i gotta, no, I gotta get me another horse I'm, I'm I'm jonesing for a horse. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I've been without a horse for a few years now, man. Man, nothing like a horse, man. It can just go out and hang out with a horse and ride it and yeah. forget everything, forget all your worries, and just just uh, yeah. reconnect with nature well, again, man. I love it. Of, nothing like of a horse, good for the inside of a man. But it's good, like <laughs> why you don't have your horses is you no. Know, it's a good reason though, because your what your daughter is doing, right? She's still doing the barrel racing and stuff. Oh yeah. Cassie, Cassie stole my horses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> right on. Daughter stole them. <laughs> so. What What about your social media, there, Shannon? If anyone wants to kind of book you to bring you in for a you know motivational talk or bullying or uh, anything of that nature, how, how do people contact you? I'm on Instagram, Shannon Rich R I T C H at M M uh, Shannon Rich M M A. So I mean, if you just put Shannon Rich in uh, Instagram, you'll see me. I'm there. Yep, and Tony totally will put that up also on the screen and in the credits and stuff like that as well, so that you know anyone can, can see that at the end. Well, I'm trying to think what else. I'm just trying to be respectful of your time. It's uh, we, we try to keep guests on there for you know half hour to an hour. We're starting yeah, to yeah. That, that hour type of mark yeah. right there. And if there's any, is there anything that we missed yeah. that you like uh, us to talk about? Well, well, I would like to ask you personally a question because I just watched uh, a Channing Tatum film the other day. Um, I, I had watched Man on a horse. Yeah. I, yeah. I had watched I had watched it before Don or Dan, but um, were you ever involved at um Fox Foxcatcher? Did you train there? Um, I only ever went to one event. That uh, yeah, no, the, the whole Fox uh, Catcher John with DuPont, DuPont. I mean, with that was DuPont. that was just a. I had heard a number of things prior to anything ever going down. Um, I actually, I think I still probably am in my, uh, trophy area and stuff like that. I, I've got a private, private type of storage facility. I probably still have a Fox catcher warm up and uh, uniform that I wore just for one particular event, but I hmm. also had clearance through Sunkiss because I was, uh, you know, I was a, a definitely a, a loyal person with the, with the Sunkiss group, but there just happened to be one event there that came up for that. But, uh, you know, when when I start hearing some of the things, and, and I'm asking these other wrestlers, you know, why they're being involved with them, because they're, they're like, well, yeah, he's a little bit kookish, but he's. It was the first time a wrestler was having any kind of money thrown at them. Right, right. So they were willing to tolerate some of his wacky weirdness and and, and could the money. stay off of his advance and stuff like that, to saying that, hey, it, it, no, 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 you know. But that's uh, the sad part is, is is the fact that you know Dave Schultz ended up uh, you know being shot and killed through the yeah. you know, the process of all that. So that's that's the sad part about yeah. that. That uh, there's a lot of people will never know the story about a, a Dave Schultz, and there's a lot of uh, I mean he, that's one of the most prestigious awards that that's given out is the Dave uh, Schultz Memorial uh, Trophy for the outstanding wrestler because he was a truly a gifted athlete. But even some of the more aspects about him is that that he was good about when he went to Russia. He could speak enough of their language. He just was good about, uh, you know, but but then to look at him, he was not like some big, ripped, shredded type of an athlete. Yeah, he just, uh, he looked kind of goofy and stuff like that, but he was he was good. He was tenacious. He, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. To the point that they were even, when he was starting to go into this foreign competition, they actually started putting out, an additional referee because 
He's the type of guy, he'll let you shoot in on him and, and he's going to hook your, your top arm and then basically rip it out of socket. All right. legally, though, you know, but sure. uh, he was he was really good at that, at doing that type of thing. So literally, they used to have, towards the end of his career, I mean, they actually would bring out another referee just to be watching for that one particular type wow. of person. So you're talking about Mark not doing nothing, not doing nothing illegal though either. Schultz, Mark, yeah, Mark about, and uh, Dave Schultz. Yeah, Mark and Dave Schultz. We talk about like, the yeah. whole du John Dupont debacle and how he got involved, and 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 who I don't have a clue as to where he's at now because you know anymore. You know, it's like does he go to prison? Does he go to an insane asylum? And because he was so ungodly rich, did anything really happen to him? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Because it, it, but anyway, I, I, I anyway I had watched the movie Foxcatcher and I knew that you know you were uh, uh, with the Olympic team and stuff. And so I was just wondering if you had any personal no I, I, I references couple, or whatever. Yeah, no, I, I met him a couple of times. He was just a strange, strange dude. Yeah, yeah, strange, strange dude that got involved with it. And again, I don't even think he knew anything about wrestling in the first place. I just think he wanted to get oiled up and wanted to do a little grappling with some some fellows. That's yeah, yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. I think he, I think he might have been going into a different category of no holes barred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yellow, uh, yellow. I'll leave it like that there for all of our yeah. uh, listeners out there trying to keep yellow the hot oil ranch. Yeah. <laughs> hey Don, do you do you uh, you still keep in touch with any guys from Japan? No, no, sure don't. No, sure don't. You? Nah. Um, every now and then, Simon Anoki, you know, he'll he'll message me or talk to him a little bit. He went out to China. Uh, started doing some pro wrestling out there and invited me. I think two years ago, I went out, uh, went out there and wrestled in China, Ooh. but not, not not too much. And then uh, I heard about your buddy; he passed away, and that was uh, that's sad, man. Sorry to hear about that. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, that was that was that was out of nowhere, right? No, yeah, so, no, no one knew he was sick or anything. Aneurysm. Aneurysm, yeah. man. Because look at him, he was in great shape. I mean, he looked looked incredible. Looking fitness fanatic, yeah. Yeah. So now I was just wondering if you had talked to anybody in Japan because I know you're like super, super famous over there. And like, do they still bring you back over there and do anything or no? No. I'm no. Just, I died out over there, I guess. You know, uh, Mr. Inoki died and uh, Masa Saido died, you know. Yeah. I died. So, like, like the changing of the guard is kind of like the new evolution yeah. wave come in. It just all depends. But, but Japan has always been traditionally has been a great country to go to. They have a great deal of respect for the older athlete, no matter if it's professional wrestling, the yeah. fight world. They seem to really come out in because I, you know, I've seen different things when like uh, the, the funks were out there wrestling stuff like that. They're well. Well into their latter years, but uh, the fact that they still go out there, it just you know they they do well, a great job of that. I'm, honor, I'm always I'm always I've always said Japan has the best fans. I mean, uh, uh, even me being a nobody, they uh, they would come to the hotel and you know they'd sit there and wait for hours for you to show up and you oh, sign hey, pictures. Hey, and hang out in the hotel they, lobby. They, people don't oh understand God. that that hotel they, lobby and, and all they, day long just wait for you. And then they bring you gifts, and, and I was just, I was flabbergasted, man. I was blown away because nobody had ever done that. And I just, yeah, man, the Japanese fans were just amazing, man. I, I really liked, I love Japan. That was, that was some good times. Again, how polite were they? Oh, uh, uh, um, overly polite, overly yes. polite. You know, yes. um, I still, I still have people message me from Japan that I've met, you know, 15, 20 years ago that are still uh, want to be my friend. And yes. it, you know they 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 got that they maybe have gotten married or had a pick uh, a kid or something. And they're like, hey, here's my son. You know, uh, can you say hi to him or you know whatever. It's, 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 it's and cool. as a as a country as a as a as a country, your impressions of how clean is Japan compared to the United States? What about graffiti things of that nature? You you don't see graffiti. You don't see theft. I mean, literally. Uh, if you had a gym bag, let's say, at the gym, and you left it there, two days later you came back, it's still going to be there. No one's going to steal your stuff. I mean, they 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 do. They, there's an honor, and they do have respect. And uh, everybody I met from Japan was really nice. Yeah, yeah. And, and upon and upon approaching their home, 
Are your shoes still left on or? Oh, no, no, no. You take them off at the door, man. Are you kidding? Yeah. 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 Okay. Look, this one. I know this. I want them to hear it from somebody else yeah, right now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Don's the same way. You know, he, he's talked about that in the past. It's going it's like going, I want people to understand. We got to get back to some basic morales of understanding and courtesies, but then you don't need to have graffiti all over. You, you know, pick up something. Mm -hmm. when, when people walk along and they just throw some something down the ground to litter, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah. no, pick that up. There's a trash can, you know, down another, maybe another 50 yards, but, you know, throw that in the trash can. You don't have to throw it down the ground. Yeah, Singapore, I think, is the cleanest place I've ever been in my life. You go, you go to jail. You go to jail. You yeah. Spit on the ground, right? Well, yeah. yeah. They, say, they, they, they say that, I, that they, they actually have a post that if you spit on the ground, I, it's. I, yeah. I talked to a cab driver that said they get a ticket if their cab is not washed. So, like, if there's a police officer and he walks by and he rubs the paint, if there's dirt on his fingers from rubbing the taxi, they get a ticket. So, they have to always be clean. It's it's the craziest place, man. Singapore okay. was awesome. Singapore, okay, that was in Singapore, yeah, yeah. Not Japan. Okay, gotcha. yeah, yeah, that, that, that was in Singapore, yeah. But um, yeah, man, the whole world has been crazy. You know, uh, MMA has given me the opportunity to travel the world from Russia, China, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Singapore, Burma, Thailand, um, you name it. You know, I've been everywhere, and and I owe it all to MMA, and uh, obviously to you and and uh, Don, Again, no, because you guys, it, it, you guys were the the, the 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 guys to go to and i feel very lucky that i've had you guys in my life to pass down and kind of put me under your wing and kind of just give me and give me and give me a hand up you know a leg up Wait, and, what, uh, do you I, leave, I, what do you leave for this fight shannon um the end of may because i'm gonna okay. be out oh wait may june april may june so the end of may because i'm gonna be out there for two weeks two okay, weeks i'll good. be out there yeah for two weeks so, uh, but no, I appreciate you guys, man. I just wanted, you know, I don't know if I ever really got to tell you guys how much I appreciate you and uh, what you've done for MMA and what you've done for me personally. So I, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you, man. You, you returned a favor a couple of times on it for me. You know? thank, so thank you. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think I, I then note, Shannon, one more time, your social media. Shannon Rich, R-I-T-C-H M-M-A. It, uh, it's on uh, Instagram, Shannon Rich M-M-A. And on that note, we're going to bring this episode of Toxic Masculinity to a close. Thanks. Shannon Rich, I'll definitely be in contact with you to find out what is what will be next new in the life and career of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Take care, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. All right. See you guys later. Yep. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.